Number seven, Viking Sunstone Navigation, the world's first polarization campus. Imagine trying to navigate across the Atlantic Ocean with nothing but a piece of crystal that looks like it came from your grandmother's jewelry box. The Vikings did exactly that. For centuries, historians thought Viking sunstones were just folklore, like Thor's hammer. Then researchers started testing actual crystals found in Viking shipwrecks, and what they discovered would make any modern sailor jealous. The Vikings discovered that by rotating their sunstone and watching how the light changed, they could find the sun even when it was completely hidden behind thick clouds or fog. Light from the sun becomes polarized as it bounces through Earth's atmosphere, creating an invisible pattern across the entire sky. It's like having a giant arrow pointing toward the sun that only these crystals can see. When you hold a sunstone up to the sky, even on the cloudiest day, it can pinpoint the sun's exact location through a property called birefringence. Calcite crystals used as polarization compasses was a technology so advanced that we didn't fully understand the physics behind it until the 20th century. Scientists tested this technique across the North Atlantic and found that Viking navigators could determine direction to within just two degrees of accuracy. That's more precise than some modern compass readings. They were essentially using quantum physics to navigate a thousand years before anyone knew what quantum physics was. Number six, the pyramid logistics. Building pyramids wasn't just about stacking massive stones. It was the ancient world's equivalent of Amazon's logistics network, complete with waterways, specialized transportation, and supply chain management that would make modern engineers weep with envy. For decades, everyone assumed ancient Egyptians somehow dragged 15-ton limestone blocks across the desert using pure muscle power and determination. That would be like moving a school bus using nothing but rope. But scientists finally cracked the code, and the answer was surprisingly simple. They cheated using physics. The secret was wet sand. Dutch researchers discovered that dampening sand reduces friction by up to 50%. The Egyptians weren't dragging blocks across dry desert. They were creating slip and slide highways using water and wooden sleds. Ancient Egyptian paintings actually show workers pouring water in front of massive sleds, but historians thought it was just ceremonial. Turns out they were documenting advanced material science. And here's the game changer that rewrote everything we knew about pyramid construction. Satellites recently revealed a hidden branch of the Nile River that ran right past the pyramid sites at Giza. This wasn't just a stream. We're talking about a major waterway that could handle massive cargo ships loaded with limestone blocks from quarries 500 miles away. Archaeologists found boat pits, loading ramps, and harbor installations that could handle vessels over 100 feet long. These weren't just boats. They were ancient cargo ships designed specifically for pyramid construction. Number five. The Roman self-healing concrete. The Roman concrete structures have been standing for over 2,000 years while modern highways start cracking after 20. For centuries, engineers assumed Roman concrete was just inferior to modern versions. After all, we have sophisticated chemical additives, precise mixing ratios, and quality control that would make ancient builders look childish. But Roman structures like the Pantheon and the aqueducts are still standing strong, while modern concrete bridges need constant repairs. It's like finding out that ancient Romans had better smartphones than we do. Scientists finally figured out why Roman concrete is basically the wolverine of building materials. The breakthrough came when researchers started as examining the concrete at the microscopic level using advanced imaging technology. What they found was revolutionary. The Romans weren't just mixing concrete. They were creating self-repairing smart materials without even knowing it. The secret ingredient was volcanic ash from Mount Vesuvius and other Italian volcanoes. But not just any volcanic ash, specific types containing reactive silica compounds that create ongoing chemical reactions for centuries. When Romans mixed this volcanic ash with lime and seawater, they weren't just making concrete. They were creating a living building material that gets stronger over time. Here's where it gets incredible. Roman concrete contains lime clasts, small chunks of quick lime that create microscopic reservoirs throughout the structure. When water seeps into cracks, these lime clasts activate and produce new concrete to seal the damage automatically. Scientists tested 2,000-year-old concrete samples and found they were still actively forming new minerals. The chemical reactions that started when the concrete was first mixed are still happening today. Number four, the Antikythera mechanism, the ancient computer that predicted eclipses. In 1901, sponge divers off the Greek island of Antikythera found what looked like a corroded lump of bronze in an ancient shipwreck. For decades, it sat in museums, while archaeologists assumed it was just another broken pot or a decorative object. Then they x-rayed it and discovered the ancient Greeks had built a computer 2,000 years before anyone knew what a computer was. 
The Antikythera mechanism is essentially an ancient astronomical calculator that could predict eclipses, track planetary movements, and tell you exactly when the next Olympic Games would be held, all using nothing but bronze gears and ancient Greek mathematics. It's like finding an iPhone in a medieval castle, except this actually existed. When scientists finally decoded it using modern CT scanning and 3D modeling, they found something that shouldn't have been possible. A device with over 80 precisely cut bronze gears that could perform calculations equivalent to a modern computer program. The level of mechanical sophistication was roughly 1,000 years ahead of anything historians thought existed in the ancient world. The mechanism could track the movements of the sun, moon, and five known planets with incredible accuracy. It predicted lunar and solar eclipses decades in advance, accounted for the elliptical orbit of the moon, and even included corrections for the extra quarter day in each year that creates our leap year system. Number three, the Roman Hippocaust. 2,000 years ago, Romans were enjoying heated floors, hot running water, and climate-controlled buildings, while the rest of the world was huddling around fires and drafty huts. They built raised floors supported by hundreds of small brick or stone pillars, creating a hidden network of air channels underneath every room. A central furnace, usually operated by slaves, would heat air that flowed through these channels like an invisible river of warmth. But the genius was in the details. Romans didn't just pump hot air under floors. They created a complete circulation system using hollow tiles built into walls. Hot air would rise through wall cavities, heating the rooms evenly from floor to ceiling, then exit through roof vents that could be adjusted to control temperature. It was basically ancient zone heating with individual room controls. They calculated optimal furnace sizes, based on building volume, designed airflow patterns to eliminate cold spots, and even included humidity control systems. In bathhouses, they used different heating zones to create temperature gradients from cool changing rooms to hot steam rooms, all managed by a single hypocost network. Modern archaeologists testing reconstructed hypocost systems found they could maintain comfortable 70 degree Fahrenheit temperatures throughout an entire buildings, while outside temperatures dropped to freezing. The thermal efficiency was so good that many systems needed to be operated only a few hours per day to maintain comfortable conditions around the clock. Number two, the Inca polygonal stonework. When Spanish conquistadors first saw Inca stone walls, they assumed the devil had helped with construction because no mortar existed that could hold such massive, irregularly shaped stones together. 500 years, and countless earthquakes later, these walls are still standing while modern buildings around them crumble. Scientists finally figured out how the Incas accidentally invented earthquake-proof construction techniques that modern engineers are desperately trying to replicate. Inca stonework looks chaotic. Massive granite blocks cut into complex polygonal shapes that fit together like a three-dimensional jigsaw puzzle designed by someone on a serious caffeine high. Each stone is unique, with surfaces curved and angled to match neighboring blocks with tolerances tighter than modern construction standards. You literally cannot slide a knife blade between these stones, even after 500 years of seismic activity. The breakthrough in understanding came when researchers started studying how these walls behave during earthquakes using modern seismic monitoring equipment. During seismic events, the irregularly shaped stones actually slide against each other in controlled micro-movements, absorbing and dissipating earthquake energy instead of fighting it. It's like the difference between a rigid tree that breaks in a storm versus a flexible tree that bends and survives. Number one, the Byzantine flamethrower. For four centuries, the Byzantine Empire controlled the Mediterranean Sea using a secret weapon so effective that enemies would abandon battles just at the sight of Byzantine ships approaching. Greek fire was the ancient world's equivalent of a nuclear weapons, a strategic game changer that couldn't be replicated by enemies and remained classified longer than most modern military secrets. It was a complete weapons system that could burn on water, couldn't be extinguished with normal methods, and terrified medieval sailors like nothing else in naval warfare. The secret of Greek fire was so closely guarded that only the Byzantine emperor and a select few chemists knew the complete formula. The recipe was passed down through generations, like a state secret, with knowledge compartmentalized so that no single person outside the imperial family could recreate the entire system. But recent chemical analysis of Byzantine fire weapons revealed clues about this ancient napalm's composition. The base was likely a mixture of petroleum products, crude oil, pine resin, and sulfur, combined with quicklime that created violent chemical reactions when mixed with seawater. But the genius was in the delivery system, not just the fuel mixture. The ships carried specialized siphon tubes made of bronze that could project the fire in controlled streams up to 50 meters. These weren't simple flamethrowers. 
They were precision weapons with adjustable nozzles that could create different flame patterns, concentrated jets for targeting enemy ships, or wide sprays for area denial. The siphon system used pressurized air to propel the mixture, creating what was essentially an ancient flamethrower with medieval engineering. It was specifically designed to be inextinguishable by conventional methods. Water couldn't put it out. In fact, water often made it burn more intensely due to the chemical reactions involved. Sand and dirt could smother small fires, but once Greek fire spread across a wooden ship, the vessel was essentially doomed.